Hey everybody and welcome along to another video. Uh, so something a little bit new for me today. I was recently invited to contribute in what's called a tag park on the DKMP Discord server. Now this was actually the fourth tag park that's been developed um, during the history of the server and it's basically where a map gets passed around between the uh, various members and each has their own go at filling in a portion of the map. Uh, so it's a really fun idea and I was super excited when I got invited to join in and uh, contribute to the park. So the rules are pretty straightforward, um, basically don't leave anything unfinished, uh, don't mess with other people's work unless you kind of clear it with them beforehand, and to finish within a reasonable amount of time. So as you can see the park was pretty well developed when it was handed to me, uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, empty space, um, so I'll take you on a quick tour. So. Uh, looking at the map here, there's a big mountain right in the middle, which was kind of the starting point. I think that, that came with the map to uh, start with. Uh, the entrance area uh, is at the front here, and you got kind of some really nice architecture going on. I'm not really sure on the name of the style, um, but whatever it is, it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. There's some really nice uh, buildings going on, a few kind of unique rides, like there's a the suspended single rail coaster used for a flying fox there, which is really cool. Um, on the right here, there's a really impressive B&M style twister. Uh, some lush kind of jungle area um, towards the top end of the park, which uh, also looks really cool. A log flume, a drop tower, kind of a custom uh, spinning ride there as well. Down to the bottom of the map here, we've got kind of a foresty woodlands area. And there's a few uh, few nice coasters here. There's a Schwarzkopf uh, Looper. There's a B&M Flyer there as well. Then we go up to the top of the map here, where there's some kind of really bright fantasy-looking sort of water park with a few flying saucer rides and a water slide. Pretty cool uh, stadium or stand-looking thing as well, which is really cool. And then back towards the center of the map, we've Definitely got some kind of uh, Lord of the Rings or Isengard theme here with an amazing attempt at recreating the Tower of Orthanc, I think it's called. Um, and there's also a uh, kind of an orc factory built into the underground here. And uh, oh, that, that just looks so cool. I'm, uh, I think that looks amazing. Uh, then over on the side here, we've got kind of a track texture version of, uh, of it, which is also really cool using some of the... I think it's the uh, Candyland sort of theming on the side here. That just looks incredible. I can't believe um, can't believe what some people are capable of doing in this game. It's really quite cool. Anyway, so the area I decided to focus on was around here. So uh, something else here, a really cool bridge, which was done by the person before they handed the park over to me and using the river rapids there to make some kind of a, a waterfall, which is really cool. So I, what I try, what I decided to do here was uh, try my hand at my first ever custom giant Ferris wheel. I thought it would fit really well, uh, kind of here in between the area of the Tower of Orthanc and the Orc Factory. What I wanted to be careful of, of course, was not uh, interfering with the view of uh, any anything cool. And I, I think this was this would be a perfect spot for it right here. So I'm going to give that a go. Uh, in uh, in a little bit so um yeah there's a there's also some kind of areas around here that I might have a go at kind of integrating and polishing up to um, but yeah we'll see how we go anyway I think that's just about it uh, what we'll do now is get stuck into the uh, time lapse all right so yeah I wanted to get the ferris wheel done kind of as soon as possible just in case I had any issues and I had to make a, a change of um, like it try out a different ride because I couldn't get it working. Um, so I was fortunate actually in that Dirklink did a custom wheel in his Mount Dirklink series a week or so before I did this. Uh, he also actually did a, a tutorial video in exactly how to make these giant custom Ferris wheels. So yeah, I, I based mine pretty well off of his and it's uh, I think it's actually the same size and everything. So. Um, yeah, thanks to Dirklink for putting out that uh, video. That definitely, that definitely gave me the ability to uh, to do this wheel. So that was awesome. Uh, so yeah, back to the kind of area I had to work with here. So I thought this place was perfect for a big wheel like this because it kind of 
looked out over the huge waterfall at the bottom of the screen there. And I thought it complemented the Tower of Orthanc pretty well. Um, you'll see with the name that I give this thing later on, I think it I think it fits in quite nicely with a, uh, a Lord of the Rings or a Sauron sort of, uh, Sauron sort of feel. So, um, I, uh, th yeah, the space I had available also probably wasn't big enough for a coaster. Uh, plus there are already quite a few in the park. So yeah, I thought, I thought it was just a good opportunity to uh, try my hand at one of these things. Um, instead of giving you a detailed explanation on exactly how you make these things, I'm, j I'm just going to point you to uh, Dirk Link's tutorial video. Um, I'll put a link in the description below so you can see exactly how to make one of these things. It's actually not overly complicated, like I don't do these sort of rides very often at all. I mean this is this is actually the first time I've, uh, I've done it in anger to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll point you to those tutorial or that tutorial video that Dirkling did and uh, he does a good job of explaining how to do it. Uh, but the general premise is setting up what's called a shoestring. Um, you obviously no, need uh, OpenRCT2 to do this. Uh, and the way you do the shoestring is setting up essentially four tracks. One is the spawn track, which obviously spawns the vehicles, in this case uh, the river raft boats. Um, the reason you use these vehicles typically for this uh, ride is the fact that they don't have sprites for angled uh, or the downward or vertical track. So it, they obviously remain flat throughout the rotation, uh, which is kind of what you want. Uh, then you've got the display track, which uh, obviously is invisible right now, but that's the one where you transfer the majority of those vehicles to, which, uh, which enable it to move in a, a circular fashion. And then you've got the two control tracks, one of, it, one of which has the perp perpendicular sections with brakes on it, which control the speed. Uh, and the other, which is the which was the wooden wild mouse coaster in this case, uh, which controls the length of the ride. So basically, how many rotations it does. I didn't bother getting it to a perfect number of rotations or anything. I just uh, did a kind of random length, and I thought it uh, I thought it was uh, pretty appropriate. So that worked out. Uh, it was a bit fidgety getting getting it uh, getting it to work, especially given the the control tracks are underground and it was there's a few other things going on in the park so it was uh, it was tricky getting the right angles to view the thing um, and you got to play around with the tile inspector and it's kind of hard uh, making sure that you're playing around with the exact tile because you've got to kind of reorder the track and you know split off the appropriate vehicles at the right time um, but yeah it actually wasn't too bad I you probably saw that I had one kind of accident where uh, the, the brake track wasn't working properly, so the thing crashed, but yeah, got it working in the end, so it's uh, I was pretty pleased. It, uh, it didn't take as long as I thought. So after I got the, the ride set up, I then went in and did the kind of ferris wheel spokes. Now um, obviously it's, it doesn't look super convincing because the spikes, oh sorry, the spokes don't actually rotate with the vehicles, but uh, I just used... Um, Again, this is a, uh, Dirk Link did this. He basically used a combination of the Junior Coaster and the LIM launched uh, Schwarzkopf track uh, to create the spokes of the wheel. And I think it does a pretty pretty good job of doing that. I mean, I feel like they look like uh, pretty uh, pretty decent looking support beams. Um, the the new single rail coaster which was released a couple months ago now, might be more than that, but they, they were actually really good at being the support beams from the uh, center of the wheel down to the ground. I uh, just kind of stacked a few on top of each other there. There's, uh, yeah, there's, there's two stacked on top of each other um, at the four, four sections there. Uh, so yeah, that worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, getting the station platform was uh, a little bit tricky, but not too difficult. It, uh, I'd basically just use the wooden base blocks and uh, some of the, I think it's the Wild West theming. I just, I really like the uh, that kind of fence type. I think it's, uh, I use it quite a lot actually. It just, I don't know, I think it just does a good job and it looks realistic. Uh, I did a bit of rock work theming around the, the base of the wheel because it was kind of time to start blending it into the surroundings. 
I uh, I yeah, go on and I noticed that there was uh, quite a few guest pathfinding issues. So I went in and added an underground path to the, uh, the big mountain in the tower there. And you can see the guests kind of swarming out there. So I kind of just had to fix that up. I was getting all kinds of notifications, uh, which was kind of annoying me. So I wanted to get that dealt with. Yeah, I was, uh, I was kind of finding it difficult to pick an appropriate theme, um, as in like, you know, uh, scenery to, to put around the wheel, but I ended up just, uh, instead of creating anything too dramatic on its own, just wanted to do something that would kind of blend it in with its surroundings. Uh, as for the color of the wheel, you can see that I'm putting in some wild colors at the moment. I was going to go with just a basic white, uh, and uh, maybe a few black and greys around uh, but I thought you know that probably doesn't match the, the style of the park as well as uh, maybe a bit of color in there so I uh, I kind of got some feedback from some some of the members on the discord server and they were supportive of me trying out some kind of uh, you know brighter colors and the reason I did that was because I ended up calling this thing the eye of Sauron so, you know, I thought, you know, a lot of big Ferris wheels, like in like London Eye, for example, we, we'd kind of stick a, an eye in the name and, you know, the eye of Sauron just was too, too obvious to pass up, I guess. So the reason I went with the red, orange and yellow is obviously uh, to replicate the, the kind of fiery, well, fire of the eye of Sauron. So uh, yeah, I think that was a good decision, and I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I finally uh, replaced the uh, the base queue with uh, some of the, I think it's the New York, uh, or the Roaring Twenties uh, rock, oh, sorry, Roaring Twenties um, roof pieces. They just they just work really well as like a, a floor um, for a queue line. So yeah, I did that. And obviously had to put in some flames at the kind of entrance of the Ferris wheel as well. I think that was, uh, I don't usually like uh, using those flames, but again, I thought it was too good an opportunity to pass up. So I stuck those in there. So now it's time to kind of get on with the next section of the park, which is uh, fill in at least a, a bit of this space around the tower. It's uh, It was kind of awkward to fill out. I mean, there's only three or four tiles around the perimeter of the path um, around the tower so you know that it was it was kind of awkward I I didn't really know what to do with it um, so what I ended up doing was a was a bit of a restaurant or cafe um, again this is the first time I've done something like this before um, you know I'm pretty new to the world of open RCT2 to be honest I mean I've done a couple builds in over the last few months, but in terms of like using Tile Inspector, it's it's not something I do a whole lot of. So all this was pretty new for me. Um, but anyway, so I I basically used a lot of track architecture to form the kind of uh, the base and the walls of the cafe, as well as the roof, obviously with the wooden coaster. Uh, I used the uh, the trick where you copy and paste a section like a, tie, a, a a bit of path with four seats on it. And, you know, that's, it kind of looks like uh, seating areas inside inside the building there. So yeah, you basically just set up a couple uh, shops and stalls and um, the guests will buy the food and they'll just kind of find their way to the seats in the in the cafe. And, you know, it kind of looks nice. They, uh, it, it, I think it's in a really nice spot actually, just kind of at the, at the top of the waterfall there, just um, on that, where those two rivers kind of meet up and uh, yeah I think it worked out pretty well it was it was kind of tricky again uh, uh, the the cutaway view was an absolute lifesaver here I definitely needed that because the the tower was blocking this side of the uh, the restaurant which is kind of good actually because this is probably the most unattractive side or angle of the of the building so um, yeah that that worked out pretty well to be honest um, having said that I think the overall look of the building is okay. I mean, I, I kind of like the angles that it introduces to the area. And, um, you know, it's it would have been difficult fitting in anything kind of square or rectangular into this area. So, yeah, the the, the angles that I worked with here, I think, I, 
think worked out pretty well. I, I was happy with it. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time playing around with shrubs and getting poles and roofs into position. Um, just because the front section of the cafe was looking a little bit ordinary. Um, I really like the trick of using the, uh, I think they're quarter sections of, um, of the piping and putting a little shrub in them. Um, th those piping, I think, that piping, I think, is from the mechanical set. And it just looks really cool with like a, uh, one of the shrub sort of plants in there. Um, yeah, that's, that's become kind of one of my favorite things to do in OpenRCT2, to be honest. Um, yeah, then I, I put in some kind of supports, which uh, in hindsight, I maybe should have added a little bit more. That kind of looks, the building looks a little bit under supported just along the river there, but uh, I think it looks convincing enough. Um, yeah, added a few shrubs and uh, mixed up the surface textures underneath the kind of base of the cafe there. Uh, I decided I'd go and add some veg vegetation into the kind of roof overlooking the river. I uh, I just, I don't know, the wooden coaster was kind of bulky and I just thought it would be nice to kind of cover it up with some vegetation. There's also a few other buildings um, around the park with a similar sort of style. So yeah, I thought it fit in pretty well. Now the next little section I wanted to work on was the the area just around the sweeping area of the uh, Schwarzkopf looping coaster. Um, basically I just wanted to put a little kind of viewing space um, overlooking that area. And uh, so what I decided to do was just put in one of the kind of ice cream stalls or fruity ice stalls, whatever it is. Um, use the uh, dark age seating uh, to make the kind of circular seating areas with some uh, umbrellas there. and. You know that's that's just about it so nothing too exciting I just went in and added a bunch more uh, shrubbery to kind of fill in those gaps yeah I, I kind of like the walkway that goes up there just thought it's a you know nice little pathway up to the top of the hill there and then kind of the the next major and the, fi the final major thing I do is fill out the area between the bridge and the kind of um, the Tower of Orthanc. What I ended up doing was just starting to use the uh, the medieval uh, theme set, just those kind of quaint little houses. And uh, as I was doing that, I, uh, I kind of just remembered about the village of Bree from uh, Lord of the Rings again. And uh, you know, I I know the the style probably doesn't match exactly. Um, it would probably be more appropriate to use the the kind of Dark Age theming set with the more uh, Tudor walls and roof pieces, but those those pieces uh, are kind of big and clunky to use. Plus, it was already a section of that exact same theming, so I uh, I decided to just throw in a few of these buildings and uh, use the disabled clearance checks to kind of bury a couple of them and you know rotate a few of them around just so they'd all look different. And yeah, just it's. Uh, it's by no means a recreation of the village of Bree, but just a uh, you know similar sort of style. So there's just a few random pathways and uh, a few of those little houses, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I kind of uh, I buried some of the uh, hedge pieces or the hedge fences into the into the ground, and I think they look pretty good. Um, and the the combination of the fence, oh sorry, the gate and hedge also kind of looked good as a uh, you know an entrance to the building. Uh, then I, I kind of decided that, you know, the, the tower of, uh, Orthanc or the perimeter of Isengard, it, from what I remember from the movie, uh, Lord of the Rings movies, it kind of had a, uh, a wall around, uh, around the perimeter, like a, a defense wall. Um, so I thought I'd at least have a go at putting something along those lines and I used a couple, uh, stacked monorail tracks um, just to kind of fill in the gaps and you know kind of close off this area just because I yeah as I kind of mentioned before the space was kind of awkward so I wanted to at least put in a nice boundary to uh, so kind of close this area off uh, yeah so I go in and do a little bit of polishing here with the uh, with the entrance to it um, I didn't end up doing an entrance uh, in this build here 
Um, so I just kind of left it and, you know, it looks a little bit awkward. I was kind of hoping someone else would kind of pick that up and put in put in some kind of entrance to this area because I think it I think that tower deserves deserves something for sure um, around the village of Bree I put in a few kind of uh, I think it was the jungle theming wood fences in hindsight probably could have used some of the dark age uh, or I think maybe the uh, uh, the the South American theming sets so probably a little bit too uh, kind of ancient style just from what I remember, it was kind of a more substantial sort of wall other than just a kind of wooden fence, but never mind. I think it looked all right in the end. Uh, so then I, I decided I was just about done with my contribution to the park and I, uh, I did notice, and you've, you've probably noticed as well, that the park rating was like zero at this time. That was just mainly because there was a few maintenance uh, issues in the park and uh, there was lots of rides that were broken down and uh, there was lots of guests kind of lost and stuck so I I decided to go around the park and you know put in a few handymen and in troublesome areas where there was uh, dirty paths and uh, I had to put in a few mechanics around as well uh, and that helped pick the park rating back up a little bit um, there were certainly a few rides that were giving me trouble with this um, I actually found it uh, the rides that had rotated entrance and exits, um, for some reason, like some of them, just uh, mechanics were having real issues fixing them, um, and I couldn't work out why for most of them. I, I didn't think rotating entrance and exits in the game would cause that kind of trouble, but uh, yeah, if you if you can let me know in the comments what might have been going on there, that would be very useful. Um, the very last thing I do here is polish up the area on the left side of this uh, really cool looking bridge. Uh, just fill it out with some vegetation just around the area. Uh, I wanted to make it kind of nice and dense and thick just because, you know, you've got a waterway right there. So I think it would be a pretty lush area. So I think that was suitable there. Anyway, I think that is just about it for the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a longer video than usual, but... Uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, cheers, bye.